the bolts don't stay tight very long if they're liquid. I'm gonna show you a little trick I came up with that is gonna blow your imposter right out of your spaceship. I broke the engine of my Jeep on an off-road trip, and this is part four of the series of taking the engine apart and trying to determine exactly what went wrong and what needs to happen to get it fixed. A little bit of sunlight left. I'll see if I can get this exhaust manifold off, and then uh, we start pulling head bolts. I just got a piece of cardboard. We'll mark this, uh, this is the uh, right, this is the front, and this is the right, this is the rear. This is gonna be intake, this is exhaust, and we've got, uh, we're gonna have what? Uh, two, four, six, and eight. And then, uh, usually gotta take something and poke some holes in here. I don't, I'm not quite sure if the screwdrivers, these holes are gonna be big enough, but we'll start with that. I can always make them bigger. Okay, so I've got these marked. This is the intake, intake side. That's the exhaust side. I know that because these are the intake runners from the intake manifold, and you've got the exhaust runner from the exhaust manifold. Let me pull the first one out here. And oh yeah, that's mint, like brand new. Nice gold color. Um, that's. I wonder if there's a difference on the top and the bottom here. It's got some crusty stuff. Oh yeah, that's uh, this this is the kind of stuff you get when you don't change your oil often enough. Stuff like that. Yeah, that's where this color comes from too. And there's still a lot of chunks, chunks, chunky oil, chunky oil on there. Oh, that one looks really bad. really crusty all right there we go so that's that's that one pop this one loose next now a lot of times there's probably a specific order you're supposed to loosen these so you don't bend or mess up the rocker shaft i i don't know i don't know if that's really a problem or not i guess we'll find out when i have to buy another rocker shaft I'll let you know later on. Here we go, taking the exhaust. Ooh, I'm hooked on a hooked on a ground. Carefully, care painfully careful. Painfully. Okay. So these are the rocker arms here. There's a push rod. There's a push rod that pushes here, which pivots this around. And this actually hooks on the valve or is on the valve and pushes the valve open. So let's get these uh, push rods out. This is the exhaust side. These are usually a little crustier. Yeah, that's, well, it is what it is. That's uh, what happens. But they seem to be pretty straight so far. All right, you need a 10 millimeter to get these bolts here out or to loosen them. So there's the easy ones that are loose. And then there's some more inside of here and I'm not quite sure what size those are. All right, so all of the head bolts are loose, although you can't really see it because it's too dark. So all these head bolts are broken loose now. Uh, the exhaust is off. We've got the rocker arms off. The push rods are off. And uh, it's getting too dark. I'm gonna have to call it a day. All right, let's pull this crank pulley off next. You need a special tool and you're probably gonna need an impact or at least some way to stop the engine from turning. Pull this, uh, I gotta pull this bolt out. Should be time for a bigger gun. Or to get out the torch. The bolts don't stay tight very long if they're liquid. Put them in a liquid state all right so that guy comes out now you need a pulley puller 
to get it out. Now you can go on the forums or the internet or the YouTubes or the whatever. You find all kinds of people willing to pontificate and tell you what kind of puller you need. You can go on Amazon, all kinds of parts, all kinds of tools that'll supposedly fit this and work. Let me show you what I'm working with. I don't care about any of that. I got my standard $20 pulley puller from O'Reilly's. Now there's a flat spot back here that's probably meant to hook on there. But this is going to be, I can tell you right now, this is going to be too close. So okay, if we just take this, flip it around, stick it on the back, and we'll yank that sucker right out of there right now. Same puller I used on the Liberty, same puller I've used on a lot of stuff. Now before I put this in, I am going to show you this. Is this will actually fit in that in that hole there. I really don't want to. I've learned from experience, you try to jam this in here, there's a good chance you're gonna screw up the threads. Usually you can take your impact and jam that bolt back in there, but I find it's better to stick the bolt in, keep it loose, get the socket off of here, and then we'll put the, put the end of that on the end of the bolt. It'll tend to wanna to walk around a little bit, but it won't, at least it won't hurt the threads in the crank. I'm gonna show you a little trick I came up with that is gonna blow your imposter right out of your spaceship. So I've got my, my center bolt here. I put it back in so I don't damage the threads, but I drilled just a small little hole right there in the center. Well, not in the center, but close enough for what I'm doing here. And we can put the tip of this right on there right in that tiny little hole in the center of that bolt. And now when I tighten this up, this isn't gonna walk around the bolt, but even if it does, it's, it's not gonna come off. There's a lip around the bolt. So we just crank that down and this thing is gonna pop right off. Easy peasy with my $20 O'Reilly Auto Parts performance puller and a small drill bit. No need for specialty tools, specialty puller, specialty Mopar, anything. If you're really smart and talented and have a fully stocked toolbox, you use the correct metric socket instead of the 13 16th that I'm using on there, uh, which is good enough. Now, this is probably gonna take, take a little while. This is where I would normally put my impact on there and just jam that sucker in there, but I got this AC condenser. I can probably move it a little bit, but I'd rather not risk damaging it, so I'm just going to use my 3 8 ratchet and do it by hand, unfortunately. Until there, where it binds up on the bolt, and i got to reposition it. I reached the end of the bolt, and the pulley still isn't off. Well, let's figure something out. Oh, i got a 13-16 socket, which should fit in there nicely. And I got a bolt that I found on the ground somewhere. I'm going to stick that in there. Stick that in there. Tighten the center pulley better, center bolt back up. Put some more tension on here. And again, this isn't, this isn't, uh, you can see this isn't exactly centered on here, but this is pretty loose. So I'm not too worried about it being too centered. There's not going to be a whole lot of pressure on here. And this will probably walk around that bolt a little bit. If you're really worried about it, you can drill a hole in the center of this bolt here, which I found on the ground that I'm not too concerned about. But I think it'll be fine with where we're at. And there we go. All the tension's gone. And you got to be careful not to hit whatever's here. Although it'd be a good idea to put a piece of cardboard here. But uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about that. There we go. Done. Piece of cake. Easy peasy. With just some cheap tools I had lying around. On the left and the right hand side of the screen will be more mind-blowing Turlo's Garage Jeep content. I will see you in one of those videos.